this uh, week we looked at glitch art and I at first I didn't like glitch art but uh, as I read more and watched more of the videos um, I've come to change my mind actually um, the reason I didn't like glitch art was because I associated the glitches with um, errors and nobody likes errors um, just something that is unwanted and undesirable and seeing them reproduced in images just looks or looked well most of the time looked bad to me um, reading through the readings one of them being uh, Rosa Megman's um, Glitch Studies Manifesto and the other being Patrick Lichty's New Aesthetics, Cyber Aesthetics and Degrees of Autonomy um, and looking through uh, some of the videos, um, it made me realize that there's more to just glitches in images. Um, in the manifesto, she talks about um, it revealing a new opportunity, a spark of creative energy that indicates that something new is about to be created. It provokes and can break open previously sealed politics. Um, I like how the destruction of something can um, lead to something new and creative. Um, we also discussed how it, a lot of the process um, isn't controlled by humans at all. It's more of a, a piece of art created by the computer, which it, um, sounds really interesting. Um, it's about making the, the broken beautiful in a way. Um, and that's something I didn't see before I read and watched the videos, read the readings and watched the videos. Um, the Patrick Glitch, the article, definitely touched on how much agency somebody has in creating Glitch art. Um, and he doesn't even call them artists, which I would agree with, actually. Um, I don't think somebody who creates glitch art is an artist. It's your the amount of um, control you have over the end image is almost nothing. Over time with experimentation, I, you, you would understand what certain um, things do to the image, but you wouldn't be able to choose what parts of the image get changed um, in the way that you want them to. And that's good in my opinion. That's what makes glitch art glitch art. Um, in the article, uh, it discusses that um, when using actual like algorithms and things, it, the artist does take control because he knows what he's doing when he's putting those processes onto the picture. He just said he says it as the artist and the machine are in a partnership. Um, but now, when using programs, the human, the creator, doesn't really have any agency at all. Even though I, my opinion of glitch art has changed, and I do appreciate the brokenness um, and the glitches in art, um, I still, it's still a glitch to me. It's to a computer, um, it's data being corrupted. It's the computer not being able to read a file correctly. Um, what was pointed out in the readings were that was that um, glitches. There's a difference between the glitch, the true glitch, and sort of the filtered glitch or the untrue glitch. Um, one of them is uh, the creator pers purposely corrupting data to be read as something else, and the other is purely for aesthetics um, and is, for example, an image put through a filter to give the appearance of a glitch. Um, it's definitely important to understand the difference between a true glitch and the filter, uh, and the true glitch definitely does speak more um, about the piece of art. In one of the videos, one of the, the guys uh, talked about how glitch art isn't just about creating something that's aesthetically pleasing or 
it's about um, explaining it's about the process and that picture explains the process of the art. The PBS Idea channel actually discussed how glitch art isn't that different to uh, art that we've seen in the past. Um, a lot of weird abstract art often uses uh, mistakes to create uh, an effect, but in those types of art, like sculptures or paintings, they're not uh, considered mistakes. It's just considered something abstract and interesting. Really, glitch art now is the next, it could be considered the next evolution of that type of art.